order. We welcome everyone to the uh, special meeting on Wednesday, August 14th, uh, 2019, 3.30. Would you please join me in the pledge, and then we'll jump right into the meeting. All right, we just got a few things on the uh, agenda that we need to uh, we need to address. First one up is North North Star uh, right of entry, uh, Mr. Hammond. I'll let Mr. Coffin talk about this. Okay. He wants to. That's fine. Chairman, Mr. Commissioners, I, I'm not real sure even exactly what they're wanting to do, and I don't have time to read this before I talk about it. But what I do know, I remember seeing that this was on the agenda for today's meeting, and prior to the meeting, say in the 120s range, I just spoke to Mr. Rogers, drove up 10th Street, turned on the Knowles Avenue, and there's two or three trucks with the board machine, with the board going straight down in the ground, like at 1.30 this afternoon, before our 3.30 meeting, mm -hmm. in the same approximate location that it shows on this map that they want to do, that they want to get approval to do a board. So I really don't know exactly what's going on, but I do know that there's activity going on right now prior to this being approved at the meeting. Okay. All right, now no, I'm, I'm kind of confused. <coughs> now, you just told me that we haven't even approved it, right? That's correct. And they already own the property drilling holes? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, it's page one, two, and three in your book. They approached us last Monday or Tuesday. And then they came in person on Thursday wanting me to sign this right of entry. And the first looked like on this map, if you can see, this is a superimposed, but it, it appears that on the original draft, that they wanted four or maybe five test wells on county property. If you look on page three, <coughs> this was the proposed area. There's one on the, what I would call the south uh, west corner of the property, and then one about middle ways of the ditch toward the uh, EOC building, and then one that looks like right in the dead center of the Humane Society building, and then one, uh, directly behind the Amos building. That was the original proposal. Now then Thursday, uh, they came back and decided that they just wanted to do the one uh, on that southwest corner. But I told them, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but I didn't have the authority to sign the deal. So this is a contamination plume that uh, has emanated from the old Allied Chemical plant on behind us over here off of Chemical Drive that was later General Chemical. Now, what's supposedly contaminated, I don't know, because they made alum that they put in the water ditch forever, and they used on that. It's a, it, it settled the water uh, from the freshwater canal, and uh, so it's bauxite and, and acid that's mixed together to, to, to change the pH of the water. But, but anyway, you can have them put in jail if you want to, or we can sign it if you want to, or whatever you want to do. But, they, they don't have the authority to be drilling a test well on our property, but they're over there as we speak. All right, I appreciate that. Now, I understand that they wanted to request for <clears throat> for the right of entry. And uh, at, at this point, now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If they have already started and we haven't given them permission, I say we need to notify them they need to be removed from county property. I mean, because it's a proper way. I mean, you do something, then I guess they want to ask for forgiveness later. but. That ain't how we, we, we operate. Uh, so um, I think they, they, they need to be told they need to, uh, to cease operation, um, especially if we hadn't approved anything. I mean, that's how I feel. I don't know how other board members feel, but any other board members want to add anything? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Hammond or Mr. Kaufman. Were you contacted about this? No request? No, sir. I saw it in the agenda that it was on the agenda when I saw the truck sitting there already working. Yeah, I I saw when I saw it, I didn't know what this could be in reference to. Well, maybe we need to send the sheriff over there or his deputy and cease and stop this operation dead in his tracks till we get, till we get go through the proper procedures. And if it's valid, then fine, but... No. I just, uh, mm -mm. that's all, Mr. All right, Mr. Rogers. Uh, 
I seen on the map looks like there's several other test wells all over the place. I know there's some on the city uh, warehouse yard. There's everywhere else. Uh, but to come in and say we're going to drill one here and not even wait to get approval? No. All right, Mr. Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Mr. Novak, we need to make any kind of action here. In, in the Mr. Chairman, the original intent was obviously to get your authority on the right of entry. If the commission wants to take, give the staff direction, we'll, we'll obviously do a cease and desist immediately. We'll go back in, in whatever your direction is going forward. If, if it's for public health and safety and then you want to facilitate it, authorize us to continue to work with them. We'll, we'll get to that point and authorize you to sign a right of entry after we get back to step one today and get them off the property for trespassing. Okay. But if you can take a formal action giving us that guidance, then we'll move forward in that direction. All right. I understand the motion that we move forward with that. So move to the motion. Motion by Seized. Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes 5-0. Right, right. we'll, we'll, the attorney will do the cease and desist, and we'll get the sheriff's office or the police department to go run them off. Uh, I don't know that it's in our interest that we let them do test wells, but if that's what you want me to work out, they, they, they sent a letter uh, dated August the 2nd. We got it, I guess, last Monday in the office. Uh, some one of their representatives showed up Thursday and wanted a meeting, and I was busy, and uh, they wanted it signed immediately. And I told them that we wouldn't be signing it, but we may have a meeting this week, and because we were co contemplating that, uh, they never got permission from us. So as far as I'm concerned, they go fly kite if that's what you want me to tell them to do. Okay. Uh, I don't, we're under no obligation to let them do a test well under our property. I got you. And to my knowledge. I, I haven't heard the city give authorization or the railroad or the uh, Duke Power. So they've got all these proposed wells. This is a subcontractor of Chemtrade who has been, been hired by, I'm assuming, I, I guess we shouldn't assume, but, but the company, which I believe is General Chemical now. Okay. Have they been con um, contracted with DEP? Michael, it says in it. They, they reference DEP in this letter, and I, and I just wanted well, to... It says in cooperation. Right. It, it right. says that they have... Uh, it says this letter is regard to ongoing investigation and cleanup envi of environmental pickups, excuse me, impact, reported by the above reference facility. North Star Contracting Group, North Star, has been retained by Chemtrade Logistics, Chemtrade, in cooperation with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to complete an assessment to determine if there are any environmental impacts to groundwater in the site vicinity. So, no, they're not working for DEP. They, they just, mm -hmm. they're working for this chemtrade. All right. So, no way to move forward with what we need. All right. Moving on down to item B, award bid number 1819-37, Dead, Dead Lakes Campground Operations. Mr. Yeager. Yes, Mr. Chairman, board members, thank you. Uh, as you know, we had went out for uh, operation and further development of the uh, Dead Lakes Campground after it was devastated from the hurricane. We actually tried to do a lot of that originally uh, with, our with our staff and, and quickly come to understand we didn't have enough staff to get this thing put back online. Uh, we went out for bid. We received two bids. Actually, both of the bids were good bids. Uh, but at this time, after, after reading these bids, after meeting uh, Mr. Novak, myself, and the parks director, um, Billy Trailer, met with both uh, of the responders, uh, we'd have to recommend that we go with JC contractors for the further development and operations of the Dead Lakes uh, campground. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion that we accept the staff's uh, recommendation to go with GAC Contractors, Inc. to run Dead Lakes campground operation. So moved. All right. Motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second and, by and Mr. Chairman, if y'all don't mind including in that, uh, that, that they have expressed interest in forming a separate LLC from just GAC to, to
to give the attorney and your staff the authority to put that in, in whatever uh, form that, as far as the company is concerned with that. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, if, if you'll include that in your motion along with the chairman being able to sign the contract once we've worked out all the details of that contract. Good deal. So that's fine. That's good. Yes, sir. All right. Question. Second stand, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Any further board discussion on this? Yes. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Uh, just so we'll have it on record. This campground, there's three components to it. We have a public boat ramp there, which is not part of the campground. Also, we have uh, picnic areas. Uh, for we have a playground area, and none of that will be charged for. That we need to let GAC, I don't know if they have a representative here or not, but understand the boat ramp is not part of their contract and these playground which they may be the groundskeepers all of them, but people are not to be charged and they go up there and they have birthday parties easter egg hunts mm -hmm. you name it weddings or whatever just for the camping okay that's correct thank you sure. yes sir all right any any more questions all right anyone in the public on this one in the public all right any opposition to that motion all right, motion passes 5-0. All right, thank you, Mr. Yeager. All right, C, moving on down, building code ordinance revision. Mr. Novak. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, the first item under C with regards to proposed amendments to your building code ordinance, which was 2001-03, is the most recent one the county works from. Um, in working with the building department, the planning department, and your administrative staff, uh, and in addressing the issues that they're currently having, uh, there's been a couple recommendations that we'd like to introduce to you for your consideration on August 27th at your regular meeting. Um, but obviously, we, we need your authorization to advertise and to schedule a public hearing. Um, so you'll read number two, it says an ordinance of Gulf County, uh, amending Gulf County Ordinance 2001-13. And what we've done is we've provided you basically a summary or an overview of the language that we'll uh, request um, in order to, I guess, add more teeth to the ordinance to enable the county staff, uh, law enforcement, planning, building departments to uh, stop the violations. And this is specifically with regards to finding enforcement of violations that will include the county administration with immediate authorization. Um, as it currently stands on the statute, you have the ability for a second degree misdemeanor and up to 60 days in jail and up to $500 per day per violation. In addition to that, for public health and safety, what we're recommending for your consideration is that there be an ability after a 24-hour notice on, posted on site for uh, owners of property for the disconnect of any power service on a non-compliant or non-permitted structure or habitation um, on a parcel in Gulf County. Um, what we're running into and what we've dealt with since the storm, obviously, is there's, and each of you commissioners have received your complaints or share of them, are folks that are illegally uh, putting habitable structures, um, RVs, uh, you name it. I mean, there's a lot of different things, and understand we, we understand as a staff that there's been a need, um, that all hands on deck, for people to have a place to live. And as we ideally come back online day by day, the ordinance doesn't enable the ability to go out there and to remove that. So you have people illegally living on a parcel and you have anywhere from 5, 10, 15 RVs on one that are served off, serviced from one power pole. Um, so this gives the county the ability to immediately shut that down so it doesn't affect or harm the neighbors and their public safety. And then we can follow the ordinance in terms of the fine structures and the special master hearings. But that Im removes the immediate problem after we actually put notice on the property. If you have an RV in Gulf County, according to the LDRs and the comp plan, you can put an RV on a parcel. You can service it with power. But when you start adding four, five, six RVs, that's when you're violating the law, and it doesn't do anything for the public safety or the neighborhood when, you're, when you have to condone that for months on end. So this will give us the ability in the ordinance clearly spelled out that we can remove the immediate problem and then obviously address the fines and the jail time if there's uh, one, two, or three violations in the future. Okay. Okay? Uh, Mike wants to add to it. And, and again, this the, the biggest problem is RVs, but but that's not the only problem. This would allow us on any case illegal construction. Uh, we've had lots of issues where people build too much on the lot, 
and, and you know, stick their thumb up in the air and stick their nose up, and, and we have to go through the process, uh, which takes three or four months. This would allow, with 24-hour notice, they either come into compliance or we cut the power off, and that's going to solve about 99% of our problems. Michael, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Michael, right now, our policy, basically, we have to give them 30 days notice uh, I, I'm thinking, is that right? That's, that's before, before we can the do process anything. starts. Yes. That's correct. That's right. And then 15 to correct and then set the, the special master hearing. Uh, we've got one in St. Joe Shores right now uh, where the, the order was done, went through the entire rigmarole, about a 90-day process uh, to, to remove the, the illegal construction. And we're sitting here 40-plus days later. It's not removed and nothing's happened. I mean, just the process is too slow. Uh, most of these things can be solved. You cut the power off. And I know we've also run into um, multiple RVs. We'll have them. They'll move them a week later. That That's right. They're pulling those RVs right back in. And, and, and in your district, oh. best yeah. example, uh, Oak Grove. Uh, we got a complaint last week. Somebody, they had put a sign for rent again. You know, it is illegal to rent in that residential neighborhood. They can, if they have their own, uh, that's fine. But this transient rental in that particular neighborhood is not within the LDRs. So the easiest thing to do cut the power off. Solve the problem. Yep. But until then, you know, they're out of compliance. We cite them. They're back in compliance. Two days later, they're out of compliance. I mean, so it's just a common thing. And they, they've, 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 some people have been playing that game, you know, for, for years. So this, this again, y'all ask for teeth in some of these things. And, uh, and again, not only would they get the power cut off, but they would also be subject to fines and then eventually they would be subject to, to jail time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's questions or comments from the uh, Commission, if not, then I just need a vote to authorize us to move forward with the public hearing 9 o'clock August 27th. Um, have the public have an opportunity to come and comment and then we'll read it and offer it for your adoption and amend the ordinance from 2001. Okay. I entertain a motion that so we move, Mr. move forward. Motion by Commissioner Second. McCrone. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to that motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, would you like me to move to D? Yes, sir. All right. Um, the second on that list there, um, you, the Commission has discussed at previous public meetings um, on how to combat and deal with the growth in, in your tourist corridor and the solid waste issues that you've encountered. Um, again, after the storm, we've changed vendors. Um, we've worked with the new scheduling, um, but you've continued to run into issues. And with your administration and the staff, they've come up with some proposed language. Again, this is not for today's consideration. It's just for us to advertise for a public hearing at the end of the month. Um, what they've come up with thus far is it's mandatory trash requirements within Gulf County Tourist Quarter. You just adopted a flow control ordinance this summer, if you all recall. Um, and what we'll do is we'll contain all of your solid waste laws in Gulf County within that flow control ordinance. So instead of creating another ordinance, we're just going to amend your flow control ordinance. We'll advertise it for an amendment. And it will contain essentially the following language, which is a mandatory trash requirements within the Gulf County Tourist Quarter. If you all recall, over the last seven or eight years, you've adopted a tourist corridor language. It's been consistent throughout past laws that you've adopted, and it will be the same geography. Um, it's mandatory trash subscription for all properties located within the tourist quarters of Gulf County. So if you're within the tourist corridor, you will have a trash receptacle, number one. Number two, all commercial properties rented for six months or less are required to have two pickups per week year-round. So if you rent your property within the tourist corridor, you're generating enough uh, solid waste that you will need to have two pickups per week, which will cut down on the issues that you've all been encountering, ideally. And then the third provision in a summary language is all commercial properties within the tourist corridor with more than two bedrooms are required to have a minimum of two 96-gallon garbage receptacles. Those brown containers that you all have, which is required by your contract, that if you subscribe to that service, you will receive one container. What the language is proposed is if you have a rental property and have more than two bedrooms and rent your home out, that the trash being generated in the tourist corridor at these rental homes requires more than one can. So the language right now proposes that if you have a rental property with more than two bedrooms, you'll have two cans in front of your property that will be picked up twice a week. And I'm not sure off the top of my head of the cost. I think, Michael, is it four? 
eight dollars. So it's an additional eight dollars per month for those four additional pickups um, in the quarter. Okay, and then that language will be uh, on the county website. It'll be available to the public, and we encourage everybody that wants to comment to come on August 27th at 9 o'clock, if you so authorize us to go ahead and advertise it for a public hearing. Right. And you can have so the debate then. Okay. All right. Com uh, commissioners, any, uh, any questions for Mr. Novak? Him? All right. This yeah. is a follow-up from your last meeting that we uh, requested the staff met and Commissioner McCrone met. Uh, the vast majority of your problem in the tourist corridor is not the fact that people don't have garbage, is they don't have enough garbage. You have these huge uh, parties in these big houses that come for a week and they're generating more garbage than, than they have the receptacles to put them in. And again, you have some of these are five, six bedroom homes, but even on the smaller homes, you have a, a, a family that comes down and cooks several times a week that they're generating a lot of garbage. So again, it's not that they don't have uh, garbage is they don't have enough pickups and they don't have enough uh, receptacles. So this will do a, go a long way for solving the problem. We did some research. It's not the management companies that are having these problems. It is the pr predominantly the mom and pop renters and the VRBOs, and many of them are out of state, and uh, and they're either not putting it out timely or not telling their renters that, to put it out timely. And again, a lot of them only have once a week pickup. You only get the Saturday pick up at the gate if you pay for it. And some, and I, Beach. some I don't have service at all. That's right. And we have mm -hmm. some houses that, that, and what they do is they fill up it. Other people's cans. Other That's people's right. cans, yep. and, and, and it causes a tremendous problem. And so that everyone knows, this is only for the tourist corridor. This is. That's correct. So. All right. All right, commissioners, uh, I entertain a motion that we move, move forward with that advertising for that public hearing. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, a motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second. All right, second by Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion on this? 27. All right, anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, come on up. I'd like to strongly support this. Um, the, it, hold on, Dr. Really, state your oh, name for the record, Trish, please. Pat Hardman, President of the Coastal Community Association, 123 Marion Lane, Fort St. Clark. Okay, here we are. Um, it, it is a problem, and it's been a problem for a long time. Uh, you're, you're basic. You're absolutely right. They don't have enough trash cans, or the ones who don't have the rental agencies to save eight bucks or ten bucks and don't have trash cans there. Uh, a lot of it is it's not that the visitors are trying to be bad. They just got nowhere to put the trash except out the, in somebody else's can or what have you. The other violators are one who have their own weekend things and they don't take the week's trash out and they find a place to put it as they leave in town. So this would solve a lot of problems. It's a health issue too. It's a bear issue too. And it solves a problem within the tourist corps. So I really appreciate y'all considering it and taking it on. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, ma'am. Right, anyone else in the public on this? Anyone else? Right, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passes 5 and 0. The, the other thing that I want to add that uh, I don't think that got stressed is that there will be penalties involved with not having garbage or not following the rules. Part of the rules in the tourist corridor is that after the garbage is picked up that you remove your can from the side of the road and take it back to your property. So we will be issuing warnings after that for a certain time, and then we will be issuing citations through the code enforcement for folks that don't remove their trash can from the side of the road. Which looks horrible, and a lot of times in the summertime, it's it's a health hazard. Okay. So that, in addition to that, we need to be strictly enforcing the, the rules in in that area. So. All right, thanks, sir. All right, moving on down to item E, litigation. Mr. Novak. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, I've reported to you on some of the litigation we've been able to uh, get out of the county's uh, hoppers in the last two months. Um, ideally, we are looking to try to get this one resolved as well. If you recall, this was um, goes back to when Chairman Quinn um, and some of you commissioners uh, set up a committee through the TDC. You worked for two years. You did a lot of project and planning. You had a subcommittee through the TDC for the 10th, city, 10th Street Park expansion um, in lieu of the Field of Dreams. You all reached a resolution with the city commissioners, and you voted 5-0 on this commission, and the city voted 5-0 to move forward with the funding 
from your TDC to help the city expand the footprint of the 10th Street Park, add some ball fields and some amenities to help increase um, uh, regional tournaments to come there and play at the city park. Um, after you had adopted that and authorized the funding and reserves, um, there was a lawsuit filed against the city and against the county. There was four counts. Um, the first count in the lawsuit was challenging the county's use under Statute 125 of TDC money, tourist tax money, on parks and recreation for this purpose. Um, it was saying that obviously that it was challenging the county's ability to use close to the $800,000 to help the city improve their parks. Um, and as you all have exercised this year several times over, you just purchased a golf course with the TDC tax for parks and recreation from your fifth penny. There's, you are lawful and permitted to use these tax funds for these parks and recreation when you, as the commissioners, which is under the statute, you're the body that authorizes and designates whether it's a, uh, intended for the use of a, attracting tourism. Um, just like you did with the golf course, you had stated in your meetings that the, the intent was to expand the baseball field so that they could bring other families and teams in here and have uh, tournaments throughout the year. Um, that was the first count. The second count was uh, against the city, challenging whether under Florida Statute 163 they had the ability to develop the park, which it has been for over half a century. Um, and the third count as well was challenging the, the city's um, ability to develop, basically taking a formal action and having a development of that park. The park existed before this lawsuit. It existed before your TDC was ever formed 30 years ago. And so it's been there a long time. What it was is it was adding features to it, okay? Um, and so we filed as a county a motion to dismiss on all these counts. And the fourth count was a common law nuisance. Basically, the language in there is that it was going to cause noise. Um, there was going to be strangers wandering in backyards, interfering with the loss of use and of enjoyment of these homes along the park, okay? So those were the counts brought against the county and the city. Um, what we're trying to do is successfully have these things dismissed. So we had filed a motion to dismiss on behalf of the county. Um, it is scheduled to go before Judge Gay. Um, ideally, if we can, don't have to take those steps and we can have the case dismissed, we certainly will do that. Um, we could go into closed session if there was anything that I would want to share with you that would be privileged, that would be transcribed, sealed, and would later be become public record um, to the public at a later date after the case was, res was resolved. Without going into great detail or, you know, obviously offering any privileged communications, I would ask that you authorize the administrator to work with myself as we move towards these hearings, that if we can successfully have this case dismissed against the county, that we will do that. We filed the motion, and that is our goal, is to have this case thrown out. Um, we are pretty, we are adamant in our position that we are using TDC tax money for lawful purposes. Our position has never changed. It will continue, as you've just done. Um, but I'd ask for you to vote to authorize the administrator so we don't have to come back in the next week or two prior to your regular meeting that if we have the ability to successfully dismiss this case that you authorize him to do so um, and I'll work with the other attorneys both on behalf of the city and on behalf of the plaintiffs who live in the city um, to dismiss this case in a timely manner. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, commissioners, uh, I have no issue with, uh, with that. I entertain a motion that we allow the, uh, the administrator the FC to uh, dismiss that case. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Uh -huh. The administrator and the attorney move forward. All right. Motion by Commissioner uh, dismiss. McDaniel. Second for discussion. All right. Second by Commissioner McClellan. You have the floor, sir. Uh, Jeremy, a couple questions and stop me if I don't need to say any more, but uh, would like the stipulation and the agreement that we were fully in our rights on spending the DDC money uh, on that park, um, if we could. Yep. So, so that's been our commission. That's been our position all along, okay. which is it's challenging the county's authority to spend the money under the statute. Um, and like I said, you've all exercised your lawful right to do that on behalf of the taxpayers of Gulf County. When you collect this fifth penny, you earmarked it five years ago for parks and recreation to attract tourism to Gulf County and you just renewed that sunset for another five years, so it's going to go to 2024. So, Commissioner, I, I agree with you, and that is the position we've taken all along. Um, if, there, if we can reach that, what we've always said is that the county will always, the county is always going to step in line with the statute and can be lawful in its use of the funds. So if there is a dismissal, obviously there's an acknowledgement by all the parties that the county and the city will move forward in a lawful manner. The city will develop their property in accordance with their LDRs and their comp plan, 
and Gulf County will continue to use TDC tax money in accordance with Florida Statute 125. And I agree, Commissioner, that is language that we will seek and we'll have them acknowledge that we, we will agree that we will continue to be lawful in our use of the funds and that, that would be our position. I j just want to say this also, yes. uh, uh, Commissioner Quinn, I just want to say thank you for you know trying to get this done. I mean, once again, the kids are going to suffer because of these actions because, I mean, what you were actually trying to do was rehab the park and bring it up to better standards. And, and the kids actually are suffering them once again because that's where we're at. Right. We're back to step one. Right. Okay. Right. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right. Any uh, uh, more discussion? You want to ask something? You do not need to worry that I will not settle for, for us paying one cent. Uh, we're not going to admit anything that we have done wrong. Uh, if we can't get that, I have no doubt that the circuit judge will, will, will remove us from the lawsuit at least. The only thing there is, is against us is just like the county attorney said was about the use of the funds which is ridiculous. Uh, had we uh, expended any major amount of funds fighting this lawsuit I would, I would not recommend us settling it. It is it's really a moot point uh, whether, whether the judge dismisses it or whether we agree to, to dismiss for, for no money and for no uh, admission of any any wrongdoing as you would say or that we could could not spend those funds then that's the only thing I'll be agreeing to so going forward don't worry about us paying a penny and or anything like that and then if, if anything changed I would come back to the board okay right. appreciate it right, any more board members anything all right, anyone in the public on this anyone in the public all right any opposition to the motion Motion passes 5 and 0. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on down to item F, Ms. Cheryl Steindorf, housing fair. And Ms. Cheryl, just state your name and who you represent for the record, please. Cheryl Steindorf. I'm with the Northport St. Joe uh, Project Area Corporation. Okay. Marvin Davis, Port St. Joe, also representing the I. Okay. Chester Davis, president of the Northport St. Joe Project Area Coalition. Okay. Oh, you got the floor. All right. We're here today to um, uh, tell you about the um, housing resource fair that we are organizing for Saturday, September 14th at the Constitution Hall and we are um, inviting any agency or business that has anything to do with housing, uh, repair, building, realtors, lenders, um, all of those agencies have already been contacted to help sponsor the event and we're hoping to have 200 people. Um, we hope that uh, the county will see fit for the SHIP program to be in attendance there. We'll have USDA and some other community action agencies there as well. And uh, we just want to move forward and uh, have the blessing of the, of the uh, county commissioners. Okay. Uh, we found out that uh, uh, they've had a success of uh, these meetings in Franklin County, uh, Jackson County, in those areas up there. So we want to follow suit okay. in order that uh, we can bring some of those uh, vendors to this area in order to help us with the impact of uh, Hurricane uh, Michael. Okay. So by doing this right here, all the vendors come, people can get direct information from the vendors rather than hearsay. Uh, so uh, we got a, a list of those. If, if the, you want to know who they are, we have a list of them. Uh, we can submit that to you. or. That's fine. But anyway, we want to be able to open up, and we're going to sponsor this, uh, the PAC, North Coast Angle PAC. But we would love the county to be a part of, of, of this so that they can hear this information for themselves. And I'd just like to say that we're also going to have um, at the uh, work, work source how, uh, jobs that will be present, and we'll have some social service agencies as well as the health department, um, someone representing the college representing um, Head Start and um, 
So uh, FEMA, there's a few of them left around and uh, they said that they could help us put this on and so we tried to get it going and started planning it before they headed out of town, which will be the end of September. So uh, that's kind of why it's such a quick turnaround. We'd love to come before you to get your blessing and to your input on planning it, but we had to move forward. And so um, anyway, so we're trying to do a very comprehensive approach. They had 800 people show up to the Mariana Housing Fair and um, <coughs> they had one in uh, Bay County as well. And so our hope again is to get 200 families and we're inviting Franklin County as well. All right, so you said it's at the center. You're going to have it at Centennial Building. Centennial Hall. September 14th. From 9 to yeah, 4 o'clock. September 14th, 9 to 4. Right, 14th, right? Yes. 9 to 4, okay. All right. <coughs> um, so what, what we need to probably do is, and I, I don't know if Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Paul, our ship people, uh, ho hopefully they'll be available on that date, but Mr. Mr. Paul, is, will that date work for you? Or are you already tied up? personally tied up and unless I'm directed by you to do it, I don't have a free Saturday to the end of October. Okay. What about uh what about you, Miss Lane? You tied up that day? So let me, let me see. So if we if we don't have a ship representative, who who could we send in order to represent ship? We'll yeah, because out. you know <laughs> those ship grants are coming. Uh, the classes are beginning. The orientation classes are beginning. Uh, in those September. classes will be done by. Uh, they'll be time have that they'll be done by the fourteenth, yeah. but it'll yeah. still be in time for people to get the information about all the different programs that are going to be offered right, right. this year. So it's okay. really important as we reach out because. We were attending church the other day, and there was probably about 30 of us there, and someone asked how many people get the newspaper, and Pastor and I were the only two that raised our hands. So um, it's really complicated to try to get this information out to the masses, especially those who are shut in, elderly, um, not on the Internet, don't get a newspaper, and can't help them through that process. Okay. Thank you. If they cannot come, we would appreciate a pamphlet or a letter that might give some identification to from us the, from the ship. Okay. Uh, we'll, 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 whoever comes, we'll make sure they got some information to hand now. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, any questions? All right. Appreciate y'all putting, uh, putting this on. Thank y'all. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right, Mr. Hammond, you have the floor, sir. Administrative reporting update. Uh, page five and six. This is uh, the eastern side on the mill site. Uh, the first one is a Dewberry proposal. The second one is a change order. Uh, <coughs> GAC. The net increase of the change order is twelve thousand four hundred dollars. Total price uh, one million seven seventy five six ninety three sixty seven recommend both of these paid for by the DOT grant. All right, I entertain the motion. So moved. All right, motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Uh, any further board discussion on this? And you say this is coming out of the DOT grant? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, any further board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right, any opposition to that motion? All right, motion passes 5 and 0. Clay had to be out of town this afternoon. Uh, they're going to start uh, the industrial road imminently uh, at some juncture. Uh, when they replace uh, that culvert, we're going to have to close that road. And we will notify the public as, as early as we can before that with the signage. But the, the uh, from Highway 71 on the north side of that uh, to probably the uh, transfer station in that range, it will, that will be closed. It won't affect the uh, Commerce Park or any of those things. They would still be able to come, but it would it would close the section from Highway 71 down to about the power line. Okay. So just we need permission from the board when that comes up to close that road and we'll do, notify. Okay. 
Right. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. What were they going to replace? He said, <sighs> they got. You're going to build in and replace the culvert line. Oh. We talked about it yesterday, and they we could never get exact. We didn't have a map. No one could actually say which one of the culverts it is, but we did all agree that it was going to be north of the railroad tracks. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect that southern yeah. part. The, the other thing, the date, did you say the date earlier? It's the 27th where we actually start milling, so you'll see it. Some, maybe some silt fencing and stuff going in between now and then, but the actual milling machine should be here on the 27th. One other thing, yes, sir. Uh, could we get some signage up maybe a week before that, and right. so people that used to using that going to the beaches or wherever will know, know this? Yeah, I think Robert Roberts handling, handling the MOT for the project, but, but Jack did request a two week notice on if they were going to close the road. I don't know if that's doable or not, maybe a week, but as, as much time as we have, we can let you know that it's coming and they'll have proper signage up telling people you don't need to come down this way. Thank you. So, all right. <coughs> all right, I entertain a motion. We'll move forward with it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion Second. by Commissioner Rogers. <coughs> Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion on this? Uh, anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public with closing this road? <coughs> Uh, any opposition to that motion? Motion passes five and up. And I don't need uh, a motion today, but just a heads up, uh, after two years of engineering, uh, we're finally uh, very close to, to advertising 386, which will be the largest Scott project that the state has ever done. The entire 19-mile <laughs> section of, of that road is going to be redone. But we also have some problems with that, and it's going to be much more complicated uh, as far as uh, we're going to attempt. <laughs> We're going to attempt on the, what I call the Harmon Bridge, uh, on the on the very south end of the bridge, uh, to get a state uh, temporary bridge put in. Uh, otherwise, that road is going to, have to be closed for probably a week, which will be an extreme inconvenience <coughs> for the folks on the south end of that uh, deal. Uh, it's probably a three to four hundred thousand dollar cost if we had to do it, which would not be my recommendation. We just had to close the road. That's not our intent. But also on the north end of that, and I can't remember the intersection, there's a huge culvert. I'm talking about a massive culvert under that road. Is it Lee, Lee Goodwin? On the north end, uh, that will have to be closed, and we're, we're talking about more than a week on the north end. Now again, that wouldn't affect the folks south of the bridge and whatnot, but it would still affect folks coming from 71 to 98. But that's a very big project, but just keep that on the uh, in the back of your mind. We're going to have to close that road, certainly on the north end, for uh, at least a week. And we're going to do everything we can to get a temporary bridge if the state will loan us one uh, at the Harmon Bridge. Uh, it is imperative that we fix that problem. It has been a problem all my life. Uh, it has got to be demucked uh, to be done right. The bridge is actually not going to be replaced. The bridge is actually in good shape, but it's the approaches. And it's very similar to what the city did at 16th Street, and uh, or the city and county did at 6th Street, and then 16th, and then 8th, most more recently. Now I will tell you, whatever we did at 16th Street has worked, because that's oh, 10 or 11 years in, and it has not dipped anymore. Uh, but and we'll see on 8th if, if they did as good a job on that. But but uh, that's going it's going to be a massive inconvenience for folks uh, for that to be closed. So we're going to attempt to do the, the, the temporary bridge but uh, not a guarantee. The last thing I have, we're looking at uh, uh, Stone Mill Creek Road to replace all the way to the prison. That's on the, it, ha we haven't, it looks like we're gonna get it. We haven't been, uh, haven't confirmed that, it, that the state's gonna fund it. That's another one where we will have to do a temporary bridge uh, at that pri uh, bridge at the prison. And uh, we may do a one lane since the only one affected would be the prison, but, but that's something looking forward that we're going to have to have a temporary bridge there because there's no no other alternative to, to bypass that, that creek. We need to have a, or I'm recommending we have a housing workshop next week with the board to talk about uh, strategies and different things that we need to have. Just and that, I would wish we'd just do that. Only th The only thing we talk about that day would be housing and ship if we could do that. Uh, if you could Get, pick us a date and see if we can agree on a date to have that next week. All right. It's <coughs> good for you guys. It's good for you guys. Next week. I'm good. Any day. 
We're going to do it in the evening time. I'll be y'all are good all next week. Jo Joe and Lynn are going to be out of town the, the week of the meeting, so if we can do it any 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 day next week, we're, I e think we're evening to time. Wednesday again. That work for everybody. Uh, me. Wednesday twenty first. Well, about about the same time three thirty that'd be good. Okay. Three thirty. Yeah, that'd be good. And and I would say that we, yeah. we probably need about an hour. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit longer, but we've got a, a lot of things we need input from the board on, input input from the public on uh, about you know going forward, not only with SHIP but with HHRP and and some of these other programs. Okay. That we need your direction to move forward. We good. We need a motion for that. Or just tell us. No. Oh, we good with Wednesday. Wednesday, twenty first. Three thirty. Three thirty. Right. Twenty third. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. all right. Yes, sir. All right, board members, you got anything before we dismiss? Get out. I, I have one yes, thing, sir. Mr. Chairman. Uh, just for the just for the record, on with this this garbage issue. We, you have bumps in the road. We had a lot of bumps five years ago with Waste Pro. But a lot of people, I get called, and I'm sure you do too. And I've got I don't know how many on here that I kept. A lot of people go to the local dollar store, or general store, or hardware store and buy a trash can. They won't pick it up because a lot of their pickups, they use a uh, arm that goes out for safety where they don't have body, and it just won't work on it. you got to have one of their cans. So I just want to let you know you've got to have one of their cans for it to work on the trucks that they use, those uh the little plastic ones you buy won't work when it reaches and gets it. It's just going to crush it right there. So I just want to make that aware to the people. you got to use their cans that they place. If you don't have one, call. If you can't, call me. We'll get you a can. We'll get you a can if you don't have one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming out to this special meeting. At this time, I entertain. Hold, hold up, hold up. Mr. You got, Chairman, I do have one uh, okay, request to speak, but it was not in reference to anything on the agenda. You should, it's, on the special meeting? Okay, all right. So, all right. I entertain the motion. We adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Rich. Any opposition? Motion passes 5 and 0. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, Oh, man, I'm